We don't always know when or where a teen takeover will take place. In tonight's special report, Anita Padilla looks at how this social phenomenon often becomes a large-scale event. Whether it's 31st Street Beach, Michigan Avenue, or a festival in the suburbs, the location of the next Chicago area teen takeover can be a surprise. The question is, how do so many teens, all of whom don't even know each other, wind up going to the same place at the same time? Most teenagers at this point use social media. Primarily, they're using things like TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram. They're also likely using things like WhatsApp or even just general phone texting. So Carly Kasurik is an associate dean at IIT who researches new media technologies. While a post about a teen takeover is shared with the original poster's followers and those followers' followers, she says one social media site has a special function to help spread the word even more. TikTok has a feature called like it's the FYP or the For You page where the algorithm kind of just shows you things it thinks you might like. If someone is engaging with certain kinds of posts, they'll see more of that kind of thing. So if a teenager is on TikTok and they're engaging with lots of things about meetups in Chicago, they'll see more and more things about meetups about Chicago. Kasurik adds, if lots of people are liking and commenting on a post, the more it is going to be reshared and show up in people's feeds. That's without taking into account any teen influencers who might share the original message as well. This is mob action is what this is. This is mob action and they don't get it because they think it's just a bunch of kids having fun and putting it on social media and getting those likes, getting those follows. It's more than just a flash mob. This is an organized effort. They create flyers. They send flyers on their social media. So if you have a uh, influencer who has 900 followers, that 900 and those 900 followers share it on their page. Now you have 900, 1,000, 10,000, 2,000, 3,000. That's why retired cyber crime detective and now cyber safety trainer Rich Ristaki says law enforcement agencies need to do a better job of getting information about these events off social media, a task that's easier said than done depending on what sites the teens are talking on. You have all these people using these platforms knowing that the company will not share that information with law enforcement. While some sites do work with police when contacted, Witsaki says some chat rooms do not. They won't respond to search warrants and subpoenas. It's all encrypted, so uh, they claim that not even the people of their company can see the messages. No matter where teens are talking, what's the takeaway from the takeover? I think it's power and influence. I think you see a lot of them thinking that, you know, from the riots, how, how much power they had, and the police just sat by and watched. Kasurik sees it a different way. I personally would not be super concerned. I think the percent of people behaving badly, even in these large groups, tends to be quite low, right? So you'll see numbers of like 400 people were there or were arrested, right? So that's 1%. Um, so most people participating, most of the young people participating aren't a problem. For the most part, Kasurik says teens are trying to socialize and meet kids from other parts of the city. And if they're doing it in a way that's not helpful or is not what we need as a city, then we should make sure that there's places for them to do that. I do hope we can use this as a moment to make sure that we're providing outlets for teenagers that were providing places that they want to be, activities that they want to participate in, um, places that are welcoming to them. She says if the teens were gathering in protest, we would know. I think we actually have a pretty um, politically astute generation of teens and 20-somethings. And so I think if they're trying to say something specific, we would know because there would be signs and they would be very clear about it. <laughs> Another question we asked is, should social media sites be monitoring for whenever a teen takeover will happen next? Kasurik says it likely won't come to the attention of these platforms because there are other posts being pushed out to millions of people compared to a thousand or less. Anita Padilla, Fox 32 Chicago.